the issue of uh, double taxation is a thorn in the flesh across the world for Kenya in the diaspora. It was raised in uh, Brussels. I was in Rome, it was raised. I was in Colombia, it was raised. I was in Angola, it was raised. I was in South Africa. And what we have done as a government is that we are now addressing that matter because for us to get support from the diaspora in terms of remittances, we must sort out the issue of double taxation. So I want to assure you that uh, the various laws are being looked into and a, rev a comprehensive review is being undertaken by the National Treasury in conjunction with the Kenya Revenue Authority with a view of getting a win-win situation where you don't suffer double jeopardy, where you are taxed here in Germany, again, when you send money to Kenya is taxed once more because it doesn't make sense. So one of the ways to get the diaspora nation to participate in our country's development is to address the issue of double taxation. And I want to assure you that the government is well sized on the matter between the National Treasury, Kenya Revenue Authority, and the State Department of Diaspora. That matter is receiving proper attention. In matters coffee, I am very happy that I'm here in Germany today. The largest importer of coffee in Europe and that takes quite a bit of our coffee. But what they take is not enough. The Kenyan coffee is the best quality in the world. And the great people of Germany deserve more of Kenyan coffee. We had a great meeting today about coffee. I am persuaded. I am persuaded that this is the destination for our coffee. And we are going to do it with you. We had a great conversation with one of the greatest logistical companies here in Germany that deals with coffee. And we have come to a conclusion that we are going to start negotiations to open a huge warehouse for Kenyan coffee here in Germany. the ambassador here and our officials in the embassy that we are going to market that coffee and we are not going to get people from Kenya to come and do it, no, they are already Kenyans here in Kenya. You people, your chairman has spoken very well, you understand the German people, you understand their ways, their traditions, their way of doing businesses. So we're going to partner with Kenyans already here in Germany. But once, once we establish that warehouse, we recruit several Kenyans who have lived here in Germany to assist us in marketing our coffee. We want to grab our coffee and we want it to be in every coffee house, in every shop, in every supermarket in every retail shop so that one we increase our foreign currency earnings number two we dignify our farmers back at home and that is i made a great milestone in brussels yesterday we signed an agreement with java in belgium that they'll start buying coffee from Kenya directly and they committed to start with 700 tons of coffee from Kenya directly from Kenyan farmers and who are very specific from Kenyan women who are farmers in the coffee. So again, we want to keep the same here in Germany and I want to request you that you support us as a government. We work together 
and I'm sure that if we have that partnership, we must stop our authority in terms of our presence having the best quality coffee in the world here present in Germany. Thank you. Kenya and Germany has a long history. When we were fighting for independence and we finally got it on 12th December 1963, Germany was the first country in the world to recognize Kenya as a free state. So our history with Germany has come a long way and we want to develop that friendship to the next level. Economic friendship, friendship based on mutual interest of the two people of the two great countries. So your presence here, again, is an indication of that friendship. And I want to thank the German government and the people of Germany for welcoming you here and being hospitable to you people. I also want to thank you very much for being good ambassadors of our country here in Germany. We have not received any negative report about your presence here. You have stayed here with the people of Germany. You have been very good people and they have been very good hosts and we encourage you to continue doing so. I'm here in Germany first and foremost to meet the people of Kenya, to listen to you, to find out how you are doing and I'm very happy for the exhibition that you are up there. I was very impressed by the hassles that you are doing here in Germany. Our position as a government is that every hassle matters. Every hassle matters. And I want to confirm that those who left Kenya for other destinations where they know nobody, where they have no relatives, where they have no land, where they have nothing, those are the true hustlers of the Kenyan nation. <laughs> Surviving in a country far away from home, figuring out how to survive, making new friends, getting to do things in a new way, learning a new language the way I've heard the chair here speak. I want to say that is the true meaning of the hustler nation. And uh, we are happy to engage. Look at the boy child. It is impossible for a community to thrive without the boy child. Because he's a seed carrier. He's a leader. He's a father. And therefore, if we are going to have thriving communities, we must make sure that the boy child is in the center and his dreams and vision are validated. And that is the work I'm actually trying to do. When I went to the, to, the, to the universities in Nairobi, I found that drug and alcohol and abuse and substance abuse was very rampant. And to my very uh, surprise that one year they had lost 55. They had committed suicide. And I asked myself, as a mother, would I just sit back watch a generation being wiped by substance and alcohol abuse and do nothing. And that is when I started the advocacy and decided to become the boy child champion. <laughs> and what we are doing is um, we are going out and uh, I must thank the government, most sincerely the president, the Deputy President, the Minister for Interior, they came in very strongly and they started advocating the cause of a boy child where they are now working with the administration to make sure this illicit brew is removed and every wines and spirit that is raised with, uh, with poison is being removed from the shelf and whatever is left is what that does not kill our boys. And um, when I look at the whole scenario across the world, I find this is replicated everywhere. 
And if I have to advocate for you girl children, now don't be jealous. <laughs> I can tell you when I mitigate the case of a boy child, I'm actually speaking for the girl child. Because when, where you go and find gender-based violence, it has something to do with that error that we created. Because when you get married to a man who has not gone to school, and you have gone to school, she, he sees you as not as an asset, but a threat. And that starts the gender-based violence. So the moment we address the issues of getting this boy child to get the access to education and being uh, respected and honored and their dreams being validated, when he goes up to the level that you are, you are going to have balanced families. And therefore, when you hear me talk about it, it is so important. The female genital nutrition that is the FGM, if we want to end it, we don't need to put money where we have been putting it. What we need is to speak, to have a conversation with the boy child. If she agrees to get married to a girl without a cut, it will end overnight. And that is why there is importance for us to have a conversation with the male counterparts.